put in their attention, they try to identify or communicate with their mind. So that's the reason that it was people say that this consciousness. I'm going to talk about a little bit the neuroplasticity as I mentioned. The system developed in fact by the medical doctor. And best device can be designed by medical doctors, especially by patient In the glasses, there's an attached the uh, camera has been attached to the glasses. Simply scans the environment by image processing. And its image could be the size 512, 512, or 1024, 1024. For when we look at the environment, we are mainly look for hues and the contrast for each one. So the processing has been done by the PDA at the belt, and then it's returned back to glasses, as you can see that. From here, this information has been passed through by wire, as you can see, to the, uh, the implant, neural implant. What we are doing, we have the parallel or the images, uh, 500, 12, 500 pixels. We are reducing the information into the only two parameters, simply use and the contrast. From these images, we are serially sending information to activate the electronics located on top of the retina. Ideally, we should be not to have the wires here, but sending information from whole pixels, 512, 512 images should be wirelessly transferred into the area here. And we should have a similar array, and each information should be reflected to the same point coming from the uh, outside. But this area, as you can see, is a very small area. Today's technology, it's impossible to build the arrays that to accommodate that. It's impossible to send that information using the wireless system. But within a five or ten years, I believe that we are going to do this. The current system <coughs> was implanted almost six years ago, but not six years ago, only six months. By one, in the patient, she never ever seen in her entire life anything. The first time she was able to see the edges, the face of people. And current technology, he is going to implant 21 subjects with 60 channels. <coughs> he has an FDA approval. He has the patent on this. And I think we will see the completely different uh, system. The four easiest one is the retina for visual processes. The most difficult one, if someone has a problem with the optical nerve system, the optical nerve system is coming from the retina and together they go to the occipital area. Is it possible to replace the malfunctioning optical neuron in the brain by implants? And also the, the processing part of the area completely replace those malfunctioning neurons. Right now it's like green, but I think if wait and see, we will, people will achieve it. I think nobody can stop at all determined to do that. The, today, if you notice that I'm mainly talking about the technology, there are several major problems. <coughs> if you are familiar with the neuroscience, neuroreporting, when you put any electrode inside the brain, maybe one day, maybe two days, these electrodes will be completely surrounded <coughs> by the other items, such as the glial cells. So the, it's important to have biocompatible sensors and systems should be implanted into the system. So without advancement in material science, we cannot do anything. So more better technology developed, and we will have much better technology. So everything is pushing each other and helping each other. Okay? This is the how it's placed the 60 A's into the uh, retina. And this is actually the, the lady was able to see it. As of today, for bionic system, this was a dream if I were here 10 years ago to show this one, right? And right now we have artificial hip, artificial knee, 
artificial food, these are the more active bionics, and we are right now going to the artificial eyes, retina, artificial arm, and we are very close for the bionic hand and woman. But the next decades, we are going to focus on more artificial skills, the extreme important. You cannot just plug in the system, but we need to also sense the heating. This is very critical with the help of the nanotubes, nanowiring systems. One important thing is to give the degree of the freedom for artificial hands. We are very close to have the bionic man have 22 degree freedom. So basically, to everything we are <coughs> can do. talk about a little bit that what we are interested in. Addiction is a big problem. Right? Uh, nicotine is... How many of you think that nicotine is bad for your health? It's good? No. 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 Anybody thinks it's good for nicotine? Yes. No, it's more bad. But the uh, nicotine no, 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 is, is bad, no? For your health. The Alzheimer's disease is more protector, no? You have partial right like answer that too. Yeah. Well, it's good for the memory. Yes. Right. Yeah. But uh, don't go smoke that. Don't <laughs> 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 uh, but we are not talking about the tobacco smoke. We are talking about only uh, nicotine. Nicotine is equally bad for the respiratory system as well. If you look at, if you use the nicotine for the respiratory neural network in stem. Uh, Madonna, it's the completely reduced activity of the nerves, but it has its stimulation effect in hypocampus. Our interest is how we can reduce the addiction. How people get addicted to nicotine or cocaine or any other uh, bad things, right? There's a reward system here. If you look at this network wired system, it's the top part we have uh, prefrontal cortex and the VTA, ventral tegmental area. They're all connected to each other. So if we give the nicotine from PFC, the neurons in the VTA, they start releasing dopamine. So what we are trying to understand first mechanism and using multi-channel electronic recording from both sides, we look at how the neurons talk to each other, connectivity, which one is projecting where. <coughs> and second thing, we are trying to develop drugs to cut the relation between these two. Simple, old-fashioned way, just if we cut the relation between the person from here, is two. In fact, it's reducing the nicotine effect on the team. Of course, we would like to develop the proteins, artificial proteins, to eliminate interaction and reduce the activity. For this, we are in the lab, we are developing the system. <coughs> we totally implant the 64 electrodes PFC, 64 VTA, and it's the animal is free moving, and we are doing some learning memory tests with and without nicotine, whether or not they respond, they remember better.
Upper airway is critical because especially people, overweight people, they have snoring problems, many others. If it's clogged and you will not get oxygen, or diaphragm you need to be uh, exhaled, inhaled, and that way you clean the, uh, the blood. This is the first hypothesis ever developed for sudden infant death. Simple diagram, but there are hundreds of people who are Harvard, Dartmouth, UCLA, <coughs> our group recently. I have received NIH award $3.5 million. I took this such and such award, many others. I'm just one of the person who contributed to this study. So it shows an immense amount of people, energy, time is there. Okay. The idea is babies, when they are between two and six months old time period, suddenly they die. Nothing wrong with the babies. They have everything is normal. And it's there is a time period lose the baby. I think many people can die in the family from stroke and cardiac or something else. But losing a child or a mother is an endless and lifelong trauma. Goes on and on just so. Okay. So the our hypothesis is that there is a critical development period. That time somehow the networks between the neurons of pruning are slows down. And then if there is a high CO2 in the room, or if body temperature increases, <coughs> or if someone smokes, they are the exogenous stressors. And if these three of them happens, maybe we can lose four six. Okay. For this one, we did uh, unknown number of experiments. I'm going to show you it's a tiny bit of that. So the critical period we have shown in single neuron. If we get the one neuron, isolate. If you look at them, with the time, with, until two months, constantly they are branching, trying to reach out. But between two and four months, they are branching so far. Isolated neuron. Second issue is that somehow, for certain babies, these receptors in the brain, they, are, they lost their functionality. And even there is a high CO2, if there is a uh, less oxygen, the sensors does not warm diaphragm or operate. And if the body temperature increases, I'm going to tell why body temperature increases, because most of the SIDS victims happen in the cold area. Because mothers, they wrap the babies with blankets much heavier compared to other places. In even the Nordic Baltic there are more seats. And it happens also in uh, smoking. If I was 40 years old when my sister died from seats. So this theory is that it's the right hand side is my theory. That it's <coughs> elevated by the temperature and smoking is possible. In 1962, everybody was smoking at home. Right? I think the senior people, they remember and they know. What we have done, we can go to the <coughs> What we did, several different experiments. The one of them, these are the rats. We are looking at the development of the respiratory neural network with several different age groups. Early, mid, and late group. Mid group is corresponds to the human almost to six months, late group adult and early. None of the babies die from six within a two months period. Because their neural system is completely developed by adult. And even if you throw the newborn baby into the water, they will not die, they will not smell. Trust me. We are recording diaphragm activities. Uh, the because the diaphragm, you cannot see it naked eye. Even the microscope, we have a hard time. So we have developed nano-based the recording techniques we implant. As you can see, the signals escape expiratory and spiratory time period. And we inhibit these neurons as a three condition. One, development time. And second one, receptors are not functional. 
we inject the bismol and we inhibit those down. This is the two different groups. If you look at the young adult juvenile group, in control, as you can see, that is time period, if you please look at the 5,000. 5, Normal respondent is they have much more vivid activity, number of the breathing is so much higher. If you count them, 500 somewhere less than 4,000. And if we inject with small, the amplitude of them goes down. And we are injecting only one bolus into these neurons. These experiments are extremely, extremely sensitive. And if we heat the animal with mismol, so basically receptors fail, mother wrapped up with blankets, and the development aged the juvenile. As you can see that this firing from single unit and firing from diaphragm significantly. Right hand side is the young adult under same conditions when animal reaches the mature position, regardless what happens, regardless you inhibit the bismol, regardless that then nothing happens to the society. For example, this is the forget about the complexity, forget about what's going on. It's more data system dynamics, so more parametrization. If you look at the juvenile, control, mismol, mismol healing. System dynamic slows down and makes the animal extremely vulnerable. And if it's adult, as you can see that it, say, nothing is changing. And when we go to the right hand side, you will see the again, juvenile group versus the, the young adult for the nicotine one. When <coughs> someone smokes or if we inject the nicotine from five milligrams or kilogram, and everything is significant in the process. So this supports the, our hypothesis that there is a vulnerable time period for babies. If the baby is body temperature is increased, if nicotine injected, they become vulnerable for the sudden process. What we are doing right now is we are trying to develop the uh, drugs, artificial drugs, I will not go into details. Is it possible when this happens, when we inject these drugs and can we activate these non-functional neurons? When they are silent, is it possible to take them? That's the, uh, the research activity with our study. advanced 
technology or laboratory. But so maybe many of us here are like, oh wow, this is first world thing. Uh, can you share some experience or motivation for students, specific experiences you have seen or heard of, coming up with a small startup? Doing something very small, but something in the field. Second big problem we have, if you look at the engineers, 